Nexus 16 has just been released and here are over 25 hidden features you probably didn't know about. The first one is that Face ID now works in landscape. So before it would only work when you were holding your phone vertically, but now if you twist your phone 90 degrees and then you want to unlock it, as you can see it unlocked right there and we, I can show you on the other side as well. And it even works at some weird angles sometimes like this. As you can see it's still unlocked. It doesn't exactly work completely upside down, but it does work at quite a few different angles. Now this is only available on the iPhone 12, 13, and 14 lineups. So if you have anything older than that, unfortunately you won't have this feature. The second one involves the lock screen. And this is a further way of customizing it. We're gonna go ahead and tap customize. You're gonna tap on the time. You can actually change the font of the time or the style of text really. So you can go to Arabic Indic, which will look like Arab numbers. And we've even got Devangari. So yeah, you've got three different styles of numbers. If you want the clock on your lock screen to look a little bit different, there you go. The next thing I wanted to show you is you can actually have a new wallpaper every time you wake your device. So you wanna press and hold, you wanna add a new wallpaper. Then you tap on photo shuffle and you can choose to have certain people, pets, nature cities, and they'll be taken from your photo library. You can even go and select photos manually you can even look through albums stuff like that top of the three little dots here and you can choose the shuffle frequency so you can either have it change every day have it change every hour have it change on lock done set as wallpaper pair every time i lock and unlock my device there's a new wallpaper right there one more lock screen customization feature i wanted to show you is you can actually tie certain lock screens with a certain focus mode so let's say i have some time to relax and i want to have some relaxing wallpapers so let's say this is my group of relaxing wallpapers or a relaxing wallpaper we're going to tap on focus and you can choose which focus mode you want to use i'm going to tap on me time i'm going to tap done so it is wallpaper pair and so now every time i select this lock screen or every time i go into focus here tap on me time then it will Will automatically change to this lock screen the next one is for notifications and you can now customize how they show up on your lock screen so as you can see here i've got my lock screen and i've got a little indicator here that says two notifications now if i tap on it it'll of course show all of my notifications right here but there's actually a way of customizing this so if we tap on settings here we're going to go on to notifications and you've got count stack or list now count is what i just showed you right now stack all of the notifications will stack here at the bottom and you can swipe up and view more over there you also have the option of list so now every time you receive notifications they will show up in a list just like this now since the iphone 10 came out which introduced the notch checking your battery life has been a little bit of a pain because you have to open up the control center and see the percentage right there but now if you have an iphone that's not an iphone 10r 11 12 mini or 13 mini, you can actually add the battery percentage in the status bar finally. And to turn this on, we're gonna go to settings, we're gonna go to battery, and you're gonna tap on battery percentage. And as you can see, you now have the exact percentage without having to open control center. Another feature is that you can access spotlight search not only by swiping down like this as usual, but you also have a dedicated button which instantly takes you into Spotlight Search. Now you can also turn this off if you're not a fan of it. And to turn this off, we're gonna go into Settings, scroll down to Home Screen, Disable Show on Home Screen for Search. And as you can see, now we've got the little dots back again. Another really cool thing you can do within the Notes app is that you can actually convert things like currency, weight, measurements, and a bunch of other stuff by simply, of course, typing it in. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna type in 500 milliliters. We're gonna tap on done. And as you can see, there's a little line at the bottom of each one, which means if you tap on it, let's tap on 255 euros here, it'll actually do the conversion for you, which you can go ahead and copy. Same goes for 500 milliliters. Let's click here and it'll give you all of these different metrics that you can convert to. Super, super good, especially if you use notes a lot and you don't wanna go into Google or Spotlight Search to convert all of this. Speaking of notes, you can now make a quick note straight from the control center by just tapping this icon right here, tapping in your note, and then tap save. To turn this on, you go to settings, scroll down to control center, and then scroll all the way down here where you've got a bunch to add, and you can go ahead and add quick note. So now every time you need to quickly take a note and you don't wanna to go to the notes app or whatever, or maybe you're on the lock screen, you need to take a note of something real quick, open up the control center, tap on quick note, tap save, 
and away you go. Removing the background in images up until this point has been, let's just say it's not been the easiest thing to do. You have to download a third party app and stuff like that. It gets tedious, but now you can remove the background on a subject, whether that be a person, an object or an animal. All you do is you simply press and hold on the thing you want to remove the background from. And as you can see, it will highlight it and it enables you to copy it or share it. Now, if you want to save this to your photos, the quickest way of doing it is you tap on share, scroll down to save image and then if we go to my recents here as you can see we've got this and it's actually pretty accurate like of course it won't get it a hundred percent a hundred percent of the time but it's still pretty good and if you're someone who makes youtube videos or memes this thing will really come in handy another thing you can actually do with it is you can press and hold on your subject and you can move it around so let's go and add it into notes here and as you can see I've added it to my note. You can do the same with messages and a bunch of other apps as well. Another new thing in photos is if we tap on albums here, we scroll all the way down to the bottom, the hidden and recently deleted folders are now locked. So as you can see here, if we tap on hidden, you need Face ID to let you in and see all of the hidden photos. So if you have any photos that you need to hide, you can hide it in here. Same goes with recently deleted. And seeming as we're in the Photos app and we're right next to it, Apple has also added a duplicates tab here, which you can go ahead and view all of these duplicate photos that you have in your photos, which you can easily get rid of. You can either merge them or just delete them entirely. And this will save you a lot of time going through your photos and looking for duplicates or downloading those dodgy, sketchy apps that make you pay like five bucks a month just to be able to look through your photos and delete all the duplicates. It's a lot safer to do it this way and even a lot quicker. So you remember how I showed you you can convert things within notes? Well, now if you go into the camera and you're in front of something that you need to translate, I've got this little text here in Italian that I want to translate. We're going to go ahead and put it in the viewfinder. And as you can see, it recognizes it as text. And we can go ahead and translate it. Okay, I made a little bit of a mess, probably because of my handwriting. But you can translate things. You can copy the translation, change the language. And you can even copy the text from within here. Because before you had to take the picture, go into photos and do all of that. And you can even search the web for that text. And this also works with things like currency conversion. And as you can see here, it recognizes its text. We're going to tap on this. We're going to go ahead and select it. And there you go. It shows you the currency conversion. This works with a lot of different stuff. This is great if you're a tourist or even if you want to just copy some text on a document or something and it will work really well. Moving on to things you can do in messages now. You can mark messages as red right from here by just swiping on it. And as you can see, I've just marked it as red. But let's say you have just accidentally opened a message and you don't have time to respond to it now and you want to go to it later. You just swipe there. And as you can see, it marks as unread. And if you ever accidentally delete a chat, now if you tap on edit and you go and show recently deleted, you'll have all of your recently deleted message threads in here and they'll be stored in here for 30 days. We're gonna tap on recover, recover 34 messages. And as you can see, it's back here. You can now unsend or edit messages. So let's say I tell myself, you suck. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't want to send that. Or I wanted to say, you're cool. All you've got to do is press and hold on the message and you can go ahead and edit it. Or if you just want to unsend it, just press and hold, tap undo send, it'll disappear. And there we go. Now, some of us have used Siri to send messages in the past. And up until now, if you said like, tell Benji Polly, I'll be there in five minutes. To Benji Polly, I'll be there in five minutes. It'll read you the message and ask you if you want to send it. We're going to go into settings, scroll down to Siri and search, scroll down to automatically send messages, and we're going to turn this on. So now when I say, tell Benji Polly I'll be there in five minutes. Sending to Benji Polly. I'll be there in five minutes. It'll just say it's sending. It's going to start sending. And unless you stop it, it's going to send without even asking. Now let's move on to the mail app. Ignore the fact that I have over 7,000 unread emails, but let's say you've just received an email. You want to respond to it, but you don't have time right now. You can actually set a reminder to respond to this email in an hour tonight, tomorrow. Remind me later. Let's say we want to be reminded on Friday. We're going to select a time. We're going to say, 6 45 p.m tap done and so now 
as it shows right there, it's going to remind you at 645 on the 16th of September to respond to this email. Now you can also clear if you don't want it anymore or you want to change it, but I'm sure a lot of people who use the Apple Mail app will find this very useful, including myself. We've all been in this situation where we've sent an email by accident and they were like, whoops, I forgot to put an attachment or do a bunch of things. You can actually undo send now. So you can undo send change it, add whatever you need to. This can be turned on by going into settings, scrolling down to mail, and then scroll down to undo send delay, and you can actually turn it off if you don't want it. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds. I would recommend 30 seconds just because it gives you the most amount of time to change your mind in case you sent anything wrong or whatever. Another thing you can also do is you can now schedule send. If you press and hold on the send button, you can either send now, send 9 p.m. tonight, 8 a.m. tomorrow, or send later. Later. let's say we want to send it next week let's do 6 p.m done and it will send and it'll actually show up in this little send later tab thing which you can go into and if you want to edit the time that this will be sent out at you can easily do that from within here for those who remember the good old days when apple music was new and fresh you could actually favorite certain artists where you would get notifications of whenever they posted a new song and things but they got rid of that and in iOS 16, it's now back. Now I'm a really big fan of One Republic. I love their music. I wanna be notified every time they release a new song or whatever. And now you can by simply tapping on the little star right at the top right corner. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it for surfaces as well because I like them. And yeah, just go through your artists and do it. So then whenever they post a new song or an album, you will be one of the first ones to know about it. Another thing you can do with playlists now is you can actually sort them by whatever order you want. So let's say I want to sort sort this by the release date. It's now an order of release date, starting from the latest song, going all the way back. And you can also, if you've got release date, for example, tap on the little arrow here and it'll show you the oldest song first. So Android has had this feature for years and it's something that I've always, always wanted on an iPhone and that is haptic keyboard. What does this mean for people who have no idea what haptic keyboard means? Basically means that every time you tap on a key on the keyboard, your phone will vibrate. So it kind of mimics a real keyboard a little bit. And to turn this on, let's go to settings, go to sounds and haptics, scroll down to keyboard feedback, and you want to make sure haptic is turned on. So now whenever you type, you get a vibration, which I honestly absolutely love. You can now have a look at your Wi-Fi passwords and copy them from within the settings app. So as you can see, we are in the Wi-Fi tab here in the settings app. We're going to tap on the little I. And if we go ahead and tap on password here, It'll authenticate with Face ID and then it'll show you the password. Of course, I'm not stupid enough to show you my password, so it's blurred out. But you can go ahead and copy it and paste it, send it to your friend or whatever you need to do. Definitely gonna come in handy for a lot of people. The next feature is called hybrid dictation. Now, what is hybrid dictation, you may ask? Well, it basically is dictation where you can speak and say things and it'll write it down. And as it's doing it, you can stop speaking and go and change whatever you need in the text or go here and then continue speaking and it will add it right in there. Which one of these was your favorite? Let me know in the comments section below. If you guys are interested in more videos about iOS 16 and the iPhone 14 Pro, which will be coming out very soon, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking this button right here. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the very next video.